Welcome to this video, whether you're an old subscriber, new subscriber, or you've just clicked on my channel for the first time. My name is Andy, and this is my channel where I do jazz guitar lessons every Wednesday. So why not subscribe and join me each week while I help you navigate your practice. Today's video is all about how to solo over Black Orpheus with scale choices that you can use. I'm gonna share with you four different levels of ways of playing over this standard. So you're working up from easy scale choices to some more interesting ones. If you missed last week's video, that was also on Black Orpheus, but that was on how to play the chord changes. And I also analyzed the harmony in terms of, you know, what's going on with the chords. So if you missed that video, that would probably be very helpful for you to understand some of the things I'm talking about today. But just recapping the important points from that, if I put the chart on the screen, the important points were that there are only a few chords out of key. It's, this song is largely diatonic, we're in the key of A minor with just the C sharp diminished seventh, the E minor seven flat five, A seven flat nine being out of key. So those are the points when you're soloing where you have to take a different approach, where a one size fits all scale approach will just not cut it. So my five ways will be from sort of beginner up to intermediate ideas. So hopefully you can follow along, but uh, if you've got any questions or comments, then leave them below. So level one, pentatonics. So you need a few pentatonic scales for this song. So we're gonna use A minor, G minor, B flat minor, and D minor, so that's four pentatonic scales. And here on the screen is when we're gonna use them. So we're gonna use A minor pretty much everywhere apart from a couple places. So on the bit where there's a minor two, five, one in D, which is the E minor seven flat five, A seven flat nine to D minor, we are gonna use G minor over the E minor seven flat five. We're gonna use B flat minor over the A7, and we're gonna use D minor over the D minor. Now, when working with pentatonics, you do miss the richness that seven note scales offer you, but you can just keep things simple and just make your goal of trying to create melodies, not just noodling with the pentatonic, you're trying to make melodies. <laughs> Pentatonics, what's going through my head while I'm doing that? I'm trying to think of da, 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 da. a melody and trying to play it. If you haven't got that level of connection between your head and your fingers, then you know, start really simple. Just start trying to, you know, take one position of the scale, try and sing a melody, try and find it, practice singing your scales as you play them, those sort of things. And um, there was one bit where I had to sort of deviate from pentatonics, which was on the C sharp diminished uh, seventh. So a little trick you can do on that one is just to diminish chord moving up in minor thirds, like this. You could keep going, but I just went. You can also use a diminished arpeggio and just shift it up minor thirds, like. That would have worked there too. So our next level, let's use the blue scale. So we're gonna add in the flat five. So instead of, we're gonna have. Flat or a D sharp as well, so that gives us something more to play with. You could add that in for when we do G minor, B flat minor, D minor as well. So let's hear what that sounds like.
that extra note, just one note in each of those scales in the pentatonic, you get the nice tension there, or you get the chromatic D, D sharp, E, which I like too. So that adds a little bit more interest. So far we've had pentatonics and then the blue scale. This lesson is very much aimed at those sort of just sort of starting to get into soloing. So we're not really thinking about chord tones here because you know, that is another level. You know, I think when you start having a nice song like this where you can just use a couple scales is, is great. You know, you could also look at it in terms of arpeggios. That sort of thing, but this is just sort of some nice simple approaches you can get into soloing with. So level three, we're gonna move on from pentatonics and the blue scale. Nothing wrong with those, you can still use those. We're gonna move on to seven note scales and the scale which will work best over all of it is the harmonic minor. Now we are in A minor here, but the presence of this E7 flat nine is a little bit problematic. If we played the A minor scale, we'd have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, which will work in certain passages of the song. And it will work anywhere where we don't have the E7 flat nine. So we need the harmonic minor, A, B, C, D, E, F, G sharp, A, because it contains G sharp, which is the major third of that chord, the E7 flat nine. So anywhere we have the E7 flat nine, that G sharp from the harmonic minor is gonna be super useful. You also get the nice sound of, you know, for me, anywhere in a scale, the semitone points are really interesting, G sharp to A, in the same way that you get B to C and E to F. Latin or Eastern sounding. I like that sort of sound. So in this way, I'm gonna use A harmonic minor over the changes, uh, anywhere where the, you know you get the two five, the B minor seven flat five to the E seven flat nine. Elsewhere, anywhere where it's diatonic, so the chords are within key, we could also use A natural minor or the C major scale. For the section out of key, let's just keep that to pentatonics for now, just for ease. And I'm just thinking of creating melodies. I'm not subconsciously, I'm probably thinking of chord tones. They might come out, but I'm just trying to use the scales. <laughs> As you could hear there, there is sort of that G sharp of the harmonic minor over that E7 flat nine. We'll really create nice, you know, things which need to resolve. That G sharp needs to go up to the A or up to the B, then down to the A. final way is going to be combining everything we've done so far, so using the pentatonics, using the blue scale, using the harmonic minor, but I'm going to be more conscious of the chord tones. Those previous times I, I was holding back my playing a little bit just to sort of create melodies and show you what sort of basic ideas you can come up over over changes with if you just sort of stick with your ear training and trying to craft melodies. This next way I am sort of thinking of where the chords are moving and you'll hear me follow the harmony more directly. <laughs>
wanted to illustrate in this video is that really, you know, when you're listening to a player, you're listening to layers of information they've learned over the years. And you're at a certain point within that sort of layered system. And it might be at a point where you're just using one scale, you're just using a pentatonic, you're just using a blue scale, and that's fine. I think providing you do musical things with it, like I say, create a melody you can sing, you can hum, don't just noodle and play sort of mindlessly. Um, the chord tones and you know more advanced scales can all come come later if you're at that stage. And it's important to remember, you know, that it, you're just building as you progress. The more you add to what you know, the you know the the more ideas you can put over a song. If you've enjoyed today's video, I do a jazz standard analysis video every month. Last month's was Cole Porter's What's This Thing Called Love. I'll put a link up on the screen. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. And join me every Wednesday for a jazz guitar lesson. And I will see you next week.